Hey, hey, happy Saturday! Yeah! We made it! And the rage is back. He exists still. And I just realized I'm very dark in that video. I don't have my lighting. Oh, it's not Dead Space <laughs> Reviews. It's, it's just not, not gonna work unless I've screwed up something. We have to miss something every time. Part of the loading screen. And we've got some really, really, really cool and interesting information to share with you. I'm really excited for this one. Loading screens are a super interesting thing. There's a whole lot of magic going on behind the scenes. Hey, Storm Mega, welcome to the stream. Lovely to have you with us. Also, Glencon, Bored, Pookie, of course, Rage. Rage is on the video with me. How's everybody doing? I hope your Saturday is awesome. At last. Yay, no better late than never. And this is a great time to join us because I think you're going to appreciate this. When you're an old school gamer like us, and we're going to be going over a history of loading. And what's been happening, as well as looking a little bit at where loading is going to be going and what new games are going to be giving us. Which and that's is super, cool. super exciting. Super cool. I am super excited about new loading tech. You know, you're a nerd when you're excited about the t technology that's used just to load your games. Yeah, well, I mean, I've known I was a nerd ever since I got a box of cables for Christmas and got super excited. So that's a really good griff Christmas gift. Yeah, I Not mean, most of, my, most of my friends were like, you got a box of cables? And I was like, I got a box of cables! <laughs> yeah, it's good. I want a box of cables. <laughs> oh, good times. Good times. I hope you're all as excited about cables as I am, because that's not what we're talking about today. Not even slightly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the art of the loading screen. I want to pull a little poll. There's not a lot of people here right now, but when I say loading screens, what comes to your mind? What's the first thing y'all think of? I think uh, I think we have a fairly fairly cross generational group of gamers here, so they've probably experienced quite a few things. Yeah, yeah, no, we've we've got a, a huge range with us typically, and I love it get to so Glenn, Glenn Con says Glenn Con says he first thinks of the the spinners yep little little spinner circles game tips game tips are good yep yep I wish I could read have a little information about why game tips are there so that's that's upcoming in the show okay excellent excellent uh pookie thinks of waiting yes yep. very much so that's absolutely <laughs> something that comes to mind with them go away pull i built a button pull says no it, i built a button that makes it show and hide i didn't build it very well i guess <laughs> not well enough there we go yeah loading waiting waiting time is definitely a big one um being from an old enough era, one of the first things that comes to my mind is changing discs. I yep. didn't have to do it very often, but my lord, I had to do it a lot. One of the most painful things I ever did on a computer, ever, it was a two-man job, it took 40 minutes, was installing Office 95 on floppy disks. <laughs> <laughs> That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. That that must have been a lot of floppies. Oh yeah, it was a stack of about 50 of them, of course all numbered. And we had a, a, a two-man operation where one guy has the floppies and manages them and the other person does the computer. So I would say like disk this and pop it in and hand him the other one and he would organize it and make sure that they're stayed in stacks of different numbers so that we can swap from this stack to that stack as we're going through them and keep them in the same order for the next time we have to use them and yeah floppy disks that's a thing <laughs> that's a thing nobody misses and that is the very <laughs> the, the beginnings of the loading screen Glencon has another contribution. Wifey says, loading screens that don't load at all because your PC isn't powerful enough. Uh, womp, the good old womp. black screen. <laughs> 
I'm gonna no. Yeah, that was that was that was my experience with Tribes Two the first time I tried to play it. That's unfortunate. I've heard that was the first game. That was a great game, fantastic game, but it was the first game I actually had to upgrade my hardware to be able to play. A bar moving. Typically for a floppy disk. And that's all you'd get. Bar move. I'm going faster so I don't bore you. They weren't that fast. They were super slow. <laughs> Those bars were not entertaining. Oh, yeah. You didn't even get a percentage, typically. You just kind of guessed. That looks about halfway. It's about half done! Or the, the good old <laughs> trick where you just hold your finger on the progress bar and go, is it moving? Is it yep. moving? Yep. Is it moving? <gasps> Click. Okay, yeah, it moved. I saw it come out from <laughs> under my finger. I saw it come out from under my finger. It moved. Estimated time remaining, four days. Six days. Two days. Windows time. Two hours. One Four week. days. <laughs> Do you know why that yeah. happened, Glencon? Do you know why that time would jump all over the place like that? Because there is a an explainable reason for it. And once it's understood, it kind of makes sense. You don't. Okay, do you understand what handshaking is in computer terms? It's something we still talk a lot of and are very aware of on the internet, but it still happens with all file transfers. There has to be a negotiation of speed between the two devices. And in order to get the, dry, the transfer started quickly, they'll start at a low speed. And the math is using how fast is it going versus how much space is left. So when it makes that first connection, it's going pretty slow because I'm pretty sure we can handle this speed. So the time seems really long. And then as it begins handshaking and negotiating to figure out how fast it can actually go, when the speed goes up, you see that time chunk down, chunk down, chunk down, chunk down until it's found a speed that they can both agree on and rely on. It's a complicated thing, but it's how computers do. Mm hmm. Otherwise, the reverse would be sitting there and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for your download or your transfer to start because it's trying to figure out how fast it can go before it transfers. And you'd get a more accurate time, but you'd actually wait longer. And who wants that? Nobody likes waiting. Especially not for loading screens. No, oh, no. <laughs> so <laughs> just to just to give everyone a good feel. Of what loading off of a floppy was really like if you're not from that era we are going to use the example of mortal kombat 2 and it's not even one it's mortal kombat 2 so there was one before this that was probably more painful so are the speeds just that much faster now or are speeds standardized so they don't need to negotiate as much speeds are just that much faster that when you're transferring a small file it it goes quick. Also, when the transfer speed between the two points is faster and the process speed between the two points is faster, the handshake goes faster, so it's much less noticeable. Computers are good now. Yeah, computers are much better than they were. I mean, my iPhone is more powerful than, like, every computer I had and every video game console I had as a kid combined. <laughs> yep. It's just flat it's, out. It's significantly more powerful than the computers that sent people to the moon. Yeah, I was actually going to use that after you uh, finished. When the first one came out, it was more powerful than all of the systems used to send the rockets to space, as well as all their communication systems. They actually looked into, for quite a while, when the first smartphones came out, changing all of their control systems over to a little handheld pad system that the pilots could uh, astronauts could check and control and stuff like that from all the old systems it ended up being way less reliable <laughs> so they stuck with the old systems as you might imagine as, as somebody who has probably used a modern smartphone <laughs> yeah yeah unfortunately new tech is not quite as reliable as the old tech much less powerful but when you're putting people on the moon, it's kind of important that the tech works the whole yeah, time. Working, working is more important than being fast. 
or small. It wasn't even or fast small. that they were working on. They were literally just working on microization of the tech because currently, since they're using the same hardware they used to put the rocket up in the first place, their communications system takes up a room. Which is significant. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's unheard of today for a computer to use an entire room for one system. But Mortal Kombat 2 on the Amiga sounds like a good time. Oh my god, Mortal Kombat 2. Five floppy on your Amiga. Discs. Five floppy disks for one game. And because it's the Amiga, its memory was less than five floppy disks which means it could not actually load the entire game into memory. So, in an interesting twist, we're looking at a microization of today's environment. That's weird. It turns out we haven't actually solved this problem. Oh, we did solve it. We did solve it, and then games got huge. <laughs> that's, that's kind of the thing. This, this problem's going to go away for the next couple gens after we talk about this. It'll come back, though. Well... Maybe. It'll come back. Don't worry. The, uh, no, the, the I was any... saying maybe it'll be solved for the next couple generations. I think you've got like one gen and then it's coming back. It's two gens. Because you got yeah, NES you figure... and SNES. And they're different gens. They're both cartridge. Oh, I thought you meant like modern, modern technology. Oh, no, no. I mean, immediately after this gen, the next two yeah. gens didn't have the problem. <laughs> they just oh, yeah. went away. Cartridges? Cartridges were kind of amazing. Yep. People who started gaming in the cartridge era didn't understand. Like, if you started on NES and SNES and all that stuff, and you never used the Amiga and the stuff like that before, then you were just like, what's load time? Which was nice. It was. It was nice. Okay, so here's how it works. All right, we want to play Mortal Kombat 2. We boot Mortal Kombat 2. Insert disc one. All right. Okay. Pop that disc in there. It loads. Loads some stuff. Insert disc two. Oh, okay. It yeah, loads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. loads some stuff. Oh, okay. More. Okay. All right. Hey, we've reached the loading screen or the start screen. We press start and it goes to load the character screen. Hey, yeah, we're at the character screen. Okay, we've selected our character. It goes into the mountain. It slides down the mountain. If you remember Mortal Kombat 2, it goes all the way to that first person, and then it goes to load the level and... Loading level. Insert disc 2. Oh, can't play the game yet. Better pop that disc 1 out and pop disc 2. Okay, we're now ready to fight. We've actually changed disc five times before you get to play the video game this is what games were like in this era ouch okay so let's say we actually won the fight no you know what let's say we lost the fight and the computer pulled a finishing move on us well there was five discs i believe no was it maybe three there was a bunch of discs yeah five discs it is written down five discs and because of the way the animations worked and the characters worked and the moves worked and the memory they had, they couldn't load the whole game into memory, like I said. So one of the things they didn't keep in memory was finishing moves. So the computer finishes you, you've lost, and right before the animation, it goes to a black screen and says, Insert disc five. Insert disc five. So that you can see the finishing move the computer used on you. You're yep. stuck there. You gotta change the disc so you can see yourself die. What an experience. Video game. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Double humiliation. Exactly. Exactly. So every the crazy thing is that anybody wanted to play video games after that. Yeah. Um, the, the way that finishing moves were done, they were actually stretched across all five discs. 
They were an end tacked on thing, obviously. And they're like, we've got some space here, some space here, some space here, some space here, and some space here. Let's get them in there. So literally every time you used a finishing move, there was a one in five chance that you would have to change disc and load before you could continue playing the game. You were better off just not using them. I guess unless you learned which levels were on which disc and which finishing moves were on which disc so that you knew I'm on this level. My finishing move is on this level's disc so I can use a finishing move here. And that would be about the best way to use your finishing moves at that point. Let's just take a moment and appreciate the fact that this is gone. Yep. We don't have to do that anymore. And then one of the greatest things to ever really happen to gaming came around. And that was, were the songs for any levels on different discs from the corresponding level? No. No, the music was all lined up with the level properly. Yeah, you, you could very much tell that the, uh, the finishing moves were not planned for when they were initially laying out the files <laughs> i don't know if i think about planning you know finishing moves there's no determination for it there's no correlation to any of the other data with a finishing move well except for the character like you know that if character x is loaded then you may need to use their uh their finisher so it makes sense to load that into the same area as the character files when you're loading them. I the thing that might have screwed it up is just literally not having enough memory. So they had to say. transpose the level for a, uh, for a static image and then load the finishers on. That's, that's sort of what I'm thinking is they couldn't have the move set, the finisher move, the level, the music, and both characters in memory at the same time because they didn't have the room for it. So they'd load the moves, the characters, the level, and the music, and then load the finishing move if needed at the end. I just, I just love visualizing the experience of inputting your finisher move. You're so proud. You memorized this combo. You finally <laughs> beat the guy who's been beating you down all this time. You go to input your finishing move. You did it. You put it in correctly. Insert disc five. <laughs> And, and really the crux, disc air, oh my god, that's, that's horrible. Why would you say something <laughs> like that, Storm Mega? <laughs> my god, I've got PTSD thinking about it. Oh, I'm, I started sweating. <laughs> hey, you got that floppy disk just a little too close to a magnet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, tired guy, welcome, welcome. We're talking about loading screens. Tedded out. Welcome, welcome. I don't recognize that name, but you've got a first, so I must know you. You must have changed yeah, your you got name. got the founder badge. And a, and a mod badge. Yeah, I was going to say, it must be Raven by the color. Tedded Oaf. Is that it? Oaf? Tets de Oaf? Egghead? Ah. Thank you. Nariel speaks French. I've been learning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pookie speaks Chinese. I haven't. <laughs> no, she speaks Mandarin if I want. I, I should not say Chinese. Raven Chinese isn't French. a language. I always complain about that. People are like, oh, yeah, they speak Chinese. Like, no, they don't speak Chinese. <laughs> that's, that's not a spoken language, sir. Sorry, that's yeah, a written language. Show. Your artist name. Awesome. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. So, the crux... Of, of all of this issue and not being able to load into RAM eventually went away because computer memory started increasing. We've got a ton of memory all of a sudden. There was a long while where the memory was actually getting comparable and, and large and, and very, very usable. And we put all of the RAM into... The system and then we put all of the memory into a cartridge and it turns out the whole thing could be loaded all at once direct memory pathways straight shot for the reads and that leads i'm going to put a one up here 
Yeah, I'm going to tab all you over. There we go. Done. Two. <laughs> We go yeah, for Mortal still Kombat. Still fighting for those 640k of RAM in DOS. Yep. yep. <laughs> the no more loading era. Now, who here expected the no more loading era to be the second era of loading screen tech development? Me. It was me. <laughs> I expected that. <laughs> and we're talking, of course, about cartridges. Which was a amazing thing. We're going to go NES. SNES. Genesis, and I got to throw my favorite TG-16 on there. Those chips were awesome. Shout out to the TG-16. Not only did they have the little chips for their handheld, it was the same chips for the desktop. If you bought a desktop, Turbo Graphics, and the handheld, the games were interchangeable. I could take it out of my mobile, put it in my desktop, play it on my T or console, play it on my TV, take it out of my console, pop it in the mobile, and play it on the go. That's that's unheard of in the eighties. What was the chip in the uh, the Game Gear? I'm not sure. Because that thing was powerful. Yeah, the Game it Gear was also was power powerful. hungry, but yep. it was powerful. <laughs> well, at the Game Gear, it it was powerful. It was amazing for a mobile. Uh, it wasn't the first full color because the TG16 was full color. Yeah. Which is. But the the Game unheard. Gear was gorgeous. It was gorgeous. It was super high powerful. And, uh, of course, it ran on its own unique cartridges, not the Genesis cartridges. It, it had smaller memory. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> the, the games were smaller. The, the on-hand memory was smaller. Everything was smaller in it. The fact that the TG-16 literally played the same chips as the desktop still today blows my mind. No idea how they pulled that off. The handheld is about this big. Screen's right here when you play it. And we also had an analog adapter for the side that could have rabbit ears come out of it and pick up analog TV signals. It was a hell of a thing. <laughs> My dad bought it just so he could watch hockey at work. That's totally not reasonable. All reason that to surprising. Buy all right. So I'm just, I'm not going to go into too much on this, but a golden era of gaming. Exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. It deserves all three cartridges loaded instantly with no noticeable wait time. Thank you for checking my spelling. And yeah, that's, yeah. that's that era. If you remember, like, you know, Genesis Sonic 2 power hey i'm at the start screen start hey i'm playing hey i'm going 10 million miles an hour already where's the or game? even more more complicated projects like final fantasy 6 or chrono trigger like there was no asset loading needed it just played yep the assets were all on the cartridge which is essentially treated as a big ram disk so as soon as you plug it in the whole game's in ram and can go very very quick data pathway transfers back and forth and it's it's almost asset streaming almost and then uh and then after that wonderful era wonderful wonderful era of no loading we went back to all of the loading the worst of the loading eh, not the worst of the loading but really bad loading <laughs> <laughs> I would still say the floppy age was worse. That's fair. That's fair. The floppy was a lot more changing. You know, at least when you got the four CD games, like Final Fantasy VII, it was changing the disc every few days. <laughs> the N64 did not have loading. It was another cartridge system where the, uh, the onboard storage there was used, like Dea said, as a RAM disc. Yep. You plug it in, you hit power, you're good. Gone. It was um, also uh, built like a tank. You could drop a CRT TV on those things and it'd be fine. You speak from experience, don't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like far too specific of a thing to be like, he's done this before. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Specifically, it was like a, I think it was a 25-inch CRT. Like, it, was, it wasn't It was huge, but it was significant. It's not a small and one. And the... Uh, 
the the N64 was fine. There's nothing wrong with it. And of course, CD loading times. I mean, we're still... I'm, I'm calling it CD, compact disc. We all know that's just a standard. I'm just using it as a disc medium. Okay. Uh, maybe call it optical disc loading times. A little more generic. Optical disc medium loading times. There you go. Yeah, Specific there we go. Specific as you can get. Pedantic to the Pedantic. extreme. <laughs> and this really opens up all sorts of interesting things. You know, now all of a sudden we've got higher fidelity. We've got CD quality sound. Yes, to distinguish from storage drives. Exactly. We've got CD we, quality sound. We've got high fidelity graphics. We've got way more space than we could ever imagine. Maybe we should talk a little bit about the space concerns so that we understand why we've made this jump. Why have, wouldn't yeah. we stop using cartridges with no load time and instant on-demand gaming, which was an amazing experience, and throw all that away and start going to an optical disc medium where you've got to sit there for... God, no, you know what? I'm going to take the PS3 and 4 off because they actually did change something about this. Yeah. There is a tech difference there. So we're going to stop at PS2. PS2 is the, it wasn't CDs by PS2, but it was still the same optical medium loading systems. That hadn't changed. So in the ye olde days of uh, the floppy drives, we had... Uh, a, a meg, well, 1.44 megs of storage on a big disc. Like, that that was the good floppy. Uh, and you would have all sorts of different assets packed into there. It's not a ton of room. And you would be shuffling things off those floppies into memory. There was no onboard storage. There was only memory. So you'd have to, like we were describing here in the Mortal Kombat 2 example, insert a disc load some stuff into memory very slowly because floppy drives could not spin very quickly. So they couldn't seek very quickly. You'd load the next disc, load some stuff, take a while, insert the next, next disc, load some stuff, take a while. Uh, and it was just a bad experience all around. The cartridges did not offer a ton more space per cartridge. Uh, Actually, they, Deus, they I think you, you have the reduction. You have the figures in your head. You have told me them before mm -hmm. uh, of the Super Nintendo cartridge, at least. Super Nintendo was two megabyte to four megabyte. Yeah. Depending on what cartridge they used. They, they could buy extra RAM to hold within their cartridge. That would expand the cartridge's capability of holding and allow the Super Nintendo to do a memory swapping system, basically. Which actually gave it like <laughs> significant performance uplifts. And it allowed it to do all sorts of stuff that the console itself couldn't do. Uh, it couldn't do um, it at the start, period, because it's so complicated. Um, it's yeah. just not realistic for people to program it by hand. It ended up taking hundreds of thousands of dollars in computers and automation and computer rendering tech in order to automate this process of really using that higher level memory. And that's when we started seeing... Uh, DK Country and, and games like that start coming out, which really just pushed that level of hardware up to the next echelon of, like, like it came out and people were like, oh, you can do this? What? Yeah, the, the interesting thing about those games is they did a lot of pre-rendered stuff. Uh, so you only were playing back assets rather than trying to render them live, which allowed you to do a ton more than the, the machine itself was actually capable of. Just as a small note, uh, they invented the pre-rendering technique yeah, to make that game. Yeah, the, the Donkey Kong Country devs did, and they did a phenomenal job. That, that phenomenal. Game, that game was hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in development costs alone. Uh, but then after we moved off cartridges, and I think by the time we got to N64, they were getting to, what was it, 16 meg? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, 16 meg cartridges? Yep. 12 to 16. Which is still so tiny when you think about it. Teeny tiny. But it was still a huge leap over the 4 to 6 meg in Super Nintendo. So, you know, obviously more stuff was able to be done with that. 
Then we hit optical discs, which are to... an explosion of storage density. Let's just let's just take one quick moment. Goldeneye, sixteen meg, COD, one hundred and twenty gigs. Yeah. Well, the new one, yeah. the old ones, the old Infinity Ward ones were actually legit. Like those yeah. were good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they were still massive compared, but. Oh yeah. We're, we're still talking multiple optical discs. Yes. Uh, but the optical discs went from the 16 meg uh, and 64 cartridge being, I believe, the biggest cartridge around at the time yes. to a 700 megabyte file system. And if somebody wants to do the, do the math on that, it's like several orders of magnitude uh, larger as far as asset storage. So now you've got huge high quality sound files, huge high quality texture files. Well, high quality mm -hmm. uh, texture files. You can store more geometry information. You're now able to do 3D stuff with the actual hardware. It's just a huge, huge technological leap. However. But it also came with incredibly slow load screens because you had to seek for the data. <laughs> well, not, not only that, but it's just, you know, that's a, a massive amount of data, and that's so much more than the system could ever dream of holding in memory at one time. So now we're getting into some interesting tech requirements. Like, before we've got, here's a scene, right? And we know all the assets we need. Okay, so these assets are here, and the system knows to ask for it, so we plug the disk in, and we place these assets in. Oh, we, now we put this disk in, and we place these assets in. We've always had this map of assets that we're building. Now the whole map of assets is on the one disk. So we don't need to be swapping in and out anymore, but we're still using the classic system of here's the assets I need, we load them, we play them, we get to the end, we dump all the assets. Everything's gone, we start at zero, we look at the new level, we go, okay, we need these assets and these assets and these assets, and, the, and we load it all up again, and we play through the level, and we dump it all again. Seems yeah, you're just You're purging, purging memory in between usages of memory. Yeah, it, and it seems logical. With, <laughs> with the technology that they had at the time, it was actually a pretty good solution. Like It, it wasn't great, but it worked well, and it made it consistent. You weren't running into memory problems like you were with cartridges where you could overwrite different chunks of memory depending on controller inputs, which makes for really fun speed runs, I might add. <laughs> I'm actually going to share this real quick for you. Let me set that up. There we go. Copy link. Or uh, a an issue with memory overwriting that you may be familiar with. Uh, the most notable one that I can think of is the original Pokemon Blue and Red games. Uh, Missing No was memory corruption based on a certain sequence of memory inputs. And then when it tried to load the uh, when it tried to load the the actual Pokemon that you encountered, it instead errored loaded the wrong chunk of memory what? and you ended up with this corrupted image rather than a sprite which then uh well if you caught it it crashed your game <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's an interesting example of it and that's also using cartridge loading still on that one yep. if i remember right so that's yep, that that's was an cartridge example loading on the game boy cartridge loading okay and so the game boy is the reason why that was primarily happening because again the asset streaming the, car the game boy didn't have nearly as much memory as other things it couldn't dream of holding a whole game in its memory <laughs> yeah so it was streaming assets off the cartridge but you could using certain memory commands and how they interacted with the game Bo game boys onboard memory to buffer uh you could change the location of where that memory address was pointing to something that's invalid, which then caused missing no to show up. Interesting, interesting. The other other example I can think of off the top of my head of uh, asset error, asset stream load errors causing strange glitches in games is the very, very, very now famous Super Mario World auto end glitch. 
made yeah. for the fastest speed run in the world of Super Mario World, uh, considered unbeatable at this point. What they did is they looked at the memory and found a bug in World 1 where if all of the memory is lined up in a certain way, it will short circuit the game and you'll just end up at the credits. And when you watch the run, I, I, I suggest going and watching it. It's not super entertaining, but it is hilarious when it ends because it's just this guy running around and putting shells in weird places and kicking things for absolutely no goddamn reason. You have no idea what's going on. All of a sudden, and then the credits start rolling. And you're like, what? It was like a few minutes. <laughs> yep. Not the not the most riveting thing in the world, but definitely worth the couple of minutes it takes to watch one of those runs just to see the the nonsense. Yeah, there's a lot of people that in the comments you'll see like, "Oh, this isn't impressive." And you know, it may not look impressive, but he was doing pixel perfect accuracy on every single thing he planted to make it in the exact spot of memory it needs in the game. That's a whole new way to play games. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> Dude, the fact that you could do that is just ridiculous. I love it. So this is the first... Now, we're going back to the loading. This is really, in this optical medium era, lurking. Hey, enjoy your lurk and carry. I hope you, hope you can learn something from it. If not, enjoy. Sorry to hear you're so Oh, tired. wait. Wait, we have a... We have a lurk emote. We I don't do, have to use and phase. It's amazing. All right, so we've got this shitty situation where we've got to dump every asset and then load every asset. Now look at world one of your favorite game and look at world two of your favorite game. Do you see a lot of things that look the same? Generally, yeah. So why are we unloading that when we finish the previous level just to load that fucker again? the hell's the point in that huh well we stopped doing that <laughs> it was a good call <laughs> it was a good call <laughs> so at this point we start developing render systems and, and asset systems where the asset system before it dumps it it's actually looking at what it's going to need in the next level and it looks through them and goes why do i want to get rid of this i need this again and every time we do that we don't need to load it off the disk again. Which is a, a massive time save because those drives were not fast. I think what the uh, the PSX was a four times CD-ROM drive. I don't know. I can was confirm it, it though. Was it four times? I think it was four times. Hey, my name's way up there. Why is my name way up there? It's hiding. Deus is shy. That's That's not true at all. <laughs> <laughs> so you you'd have these really slow uh really slow disk drives that have to physically spin a thing which takes a lot of energy and it has to have the little optical sensor read the data off the disk which you know it has to do a whole bunch of different rotations to do it was just it was not not quick. Everything took a long time to do. Hey, check it out. It's the SCPH 1000 motherboard. Neat. Not what I'm looking for, but interesting. IO system and connectivity uh, two times with a maximum data throughput of 300 kilobits per second. Yeah, two times. If anybody remembers using uh, old, 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 probably 16 times if you had it in a PC disk drives. That's that's some slow shit. <laughs> and, and 16 times is still eight times faster. Yeah. Yeah, it was not not fast. It's it's standard load speed is 150 kilobit per second. All right. It has 128 kilobyte data buffer. That's what we're dealing with at this point. And now suddenly those load screens on PSX games where you're just sitting there for a solid 30 to 45 seconds just to like enter a door makes sense you know what the worst loading time i remember on the psx was diablo i never played diablo on the psx specifically I had it on pc yeah i had it on pc as well <laughs> but we were specifically playing it multiplayer two player on one console sitting in buddy's uh, room 
which was a totally new way to play that game, and it was amazing! We had both finished it many, many times on PC, but we were like, yeah, let's check it out on PlayStation together. Man, we ended up writing a song called Loading Time that we would sing twice every time the level loaded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. And sometimes, and some, sometimes of some of the enemies just became just immortals. Yep. 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 So the the load times on these consoles where they were seeking all of the data off the disk, putting it into memory, dumping it, doing it all again, real slow. Real, 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 real slow. <laughs> but it's easy to see why they would do it that way. I mean, if you're the first guy making a first game, doing a first level loading system, and you've got to make it get built, you're going to build it as simple as possible. Load the stuff you need, dump the stuff you've just used, load the stuff you need, dump the stuff you've just used. That's how I would And especially it. when you when you've got very simple instruction sets available on the the chipset itself, it's it is legitimately faster sometimes to just purge memory. This is true. You this just, is you, true. You just <laughs> tell it to dump everything. In that old era, if we would have taken the time to analyze every asset before dumping them, we likely would have had longer load times. Things started to change a bit in the, the PS2 era. They started to be a little bit more intelligent about what they were loading off disk when they were loading it off the disk. But it still wasn't great. It was still very much seek times on opti optical medium. And it just, it, it was not good. And, and then an interesting thing. Up. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Very much. Interesting thing happened uh, when the. I don't remember if the original Xbox. No, the original Xbox didn't have a hard drive, did it? Yes, uh, it did. So I guess the. Oh, did it? Yep. Huh. So I guess OG Xbox and the PS3 was when they introduced a hard drive in that. Yep. Uh, they started to change how things were done. Well, we, we do have to touch on a little bit of interesting poignant history before we move on from there. Because a really interesting thing started happening in the PSX era where we started getting more creative with loading screens. Like, you know, there's, oh, there's right. different that's ways true. we can load things, but you know what? The core design that people were working on was let's not let players get bored during these loading screens. Right? That's why the early loading screens where I was singing the song Loading Screen, which was actually done to the beat of the song Closing Time. Good times. That, that was what I intuited immediately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we started getting information. You know, we started getting statgasms and, and stuff like this. But the very, very, very first ones to try to entertain us during our loading screen time or namco namco did it first namco what the first game to really try to entertain you during the loading screen was in 95 no that was when the patent was when would when did the game come out it was test drive on the ps2 so it was after psx like PSX, we're just dealing with this loading. We're getting a little better at loading, but we don't have the power and the memory to do anything other than load at that time. It's going to cost too much. The PS2 was much better. I mean, the loading times were long, but it wasn't processor bogged loading time. It wasn't harder, you know, memory bogged loading time. It was disc bog. The optical disc. Yeah, the disc is the, the, the weakest link here. It's, it's the smallest pipe. So then Namco went, well, we've got all this extra processor kicking around. 
why don't we do something with it? And they go ahead and they put Pong in their loading screen. So that while you're waiting for your game of test drive to play, you can play Pong. What a great idea. Yeah, so, give you something to do. Super, super, super well received. And they also ended up putting it into Ridge Racer. And in Ridge Racer, yeah, I know my camera's still off. Thank you. I've, I've still got something in my hands here. Hey, Snow, welcome, welcome. I'm doing good. Yeah, we're having we a have great all panel. Of, all of our things in the new apartment. We did get the kitchen done. The kitchen is all unpacked. Uh, and now I gotta, I gotta talk about video games. Yeah, I love video games. So, Ridge Racer comes out. They also put Galaxium in that one. It's sort of like a Galaga idea, if you don't know Galaxium. And you can play this little, like, shmup-type arcade shooter game while you wait for your car racing game to load. Isn't this a great idea? No, no, I mean, don't, don't you think people would be like, that's a good idea, we should do that. Because I, yeah. I, saw, I saw websites do it. Because this was the Flash era. Does anybody remember the Flash era of websites? When you would hit a website and you'd get a loading screen as your website loads? Because they wanted to make it pretty and interactive. And then people realized, wait a minute, instant information is much better <laughs> yeah well, as it turns yes. out waiting for huge chunks of assets to load <laughs> nobody likes that yeah, no it was a bad idea but i did see creative websites running pong can you tell me another game that used a little game during its load screen anyone can anyone name one <laughs> the dinosaur game when the internet is out yeah yeah i guess that qualifies uh there's shoot it was one of the dragon ball games on ps2 really also published by uh Namco. bamco okay that that would be why that would be why then <laughs> <clears throat> so you know why this wasn't used very often namco patented it namco nobody owned else could the do patent it patent for playing a game during a loading screen. In a game. YouTube's not a game. So they were allowed to do stuff like that. But if you're making a game, you have to pay Namco if you want to use a mini game during your loading screen. <laughs> so, good and bad? Kind of good and bad. Because... People can't give us fun little mini games to play during our loading screens. But at the same time, they were forced to do something else. And that something else was often to start giving the player more information about the game. You would start to see useful hints and tips displayed with nice assets in your load screens. That patent like expired the, uh, 2015, by the way. Just so you know. Yeah, so you, you can now put mini games in your load screens. Um, but the 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 in, now infamous load screen tip that we love so much in Doom Eternal, where to kill the Hell Baron, or no, who, no, it's not the Hell Baron. I think it's whoever is. to kill the kill the big guy. Yeah, shoot him until he dies. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So this is when it gets fun, where we really need your help. After 95, PS2 and forward, loading screens got really interesting, like a huge variety. I've got my notes, but what are your favorites? 
not gonna lie all my favorites are bamco load screens <laughs> <laughs> fun animations uh, I had that listed as a type. Uh, yeah, you just loading a nice animation while things are are loading up. Yeah, that's good. So like Borderlands, when you're warping from place to place, has got the like hyperspace animation. Yep, yep. Destiny Two, Destiny Two has you flying around in your ship. Yep. Um, it, those ones we could actually call, those aren't fun. <clears throat> those descriptions are transitional animations. Uh, earliest. They, they are, they are fun transitional animations. <laughs> but they're, they're still transitional, right? They're, they're an animation showing, going from where you are to what it's loading so that there isn't as much break in the immersion. You feel like you've gone on the path and the journey, even though all you've seen is a load screen during that time. Um, my favorite early example of that, as far back as I can remember, is uh, Resident Evil. Yeah. On the PSX. Every time you'd go into a new room, the loading screen would be the door that you're going through, and they would change the door to look like the door you used. It wasn't a ton of memory. It was a bunch of effort, but it added so much to the game. Yeah, rather than just having a blank screen there, you get your nice little animation of the door opening, and then your camera moves through it. Yeah. Destiny 2 has that as well. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. That's where it came from originally. I don't think I know of anyone that did it before that. It was pretty unique. I think, uh, Silent Hill? No. Silent Hill came out after Resident Evil. Oh, was it? Yes. Huh. I always get those two mixed up. Yeah, Resident Evil started it. Silent Hill copied it. A solid stake smoking. Yep. 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 <laughs> Taking that's, a smoke break. That's more of the fu um the character animations. Uh, another one was the darkness character rant, where he would actually talk to you and like bitch about things, and um, and then you go you start to see the the obfuscated load screen. One of our favorite things to call out when we're playing somewhat modern games, uh, where you have just a uh, a long hallway where you don't really do anything. You just hold a button. One of the great, That's because they're loading stuff. One of the great classic early examples of that, since we just had the Solid Snake smoking example, and it's such a meme, MGS3's ladder. The ladder. <clears throat> There's a great big ladder. Yeah, elevators in Mass Effect. That is a the good MGS example. ladder is uh, is particularly good though because it's it's like what a solid minute at least of climbing a ladder just <laughs> snake just just climbing he just climbs this ladder that's the whole thing and, and you know there's epic music playing in the background which probably made the load times longer uh, but he he just climbs he just just climbs this ladder for like a solid minute. <laughs> the, the ladder is my favorite example of it because your speed is locked on the ladder in the game. So they actually knew exactly how long it would take you to climb that ladder every single time and they could make it seamless. Not like the chain they tried to obfuscate load in God of War 3 when I just jumped all the way up it and then put the controller down and had a conversation with you guys while the game hung and loaded the rest of the assets for the next area. <laughs> I'm going to have to go twice. watch mods. <laughs> <laughs> so. What? Oh, I like gifts. Thank you, Encaria. I will definitely check that later. 
Yeah, so there's a note for you developers. If you're going to use an obfuscated load screen, do it in a way that the character's speed is consistent. If you're or at least you... make it make it long enough that there is no way that you can get to the end before it loads. Yeah, it it really breaks the game. Like like honestly, it took so long to load on the first one. I thought it crashed. I was about ready to like kill it and restart it. And then it went back to playing. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I Consoles. went too quick. Are the ladders in Bloodborne making fun of those, these ladders? No. No, it's just no. that's the design of the level and they needed to get you from one place to another. You can actually I'll make those ladders asset pretty loading. quick. Maybe some asset loading, but they, they tend to... There's... there's there's more depth than that to their level design. There is more depth to it, but they do also do zone culling. Yes. Uh, so they'll, they'll load zones before and behind you, and if they've got a particularly complicated zone to load, then you know, put a ladder there. <laughs> yep. They do an excellent, excellent job in those games of creating low-poly duplicates of all their existing stuff. And beyond the immediate draw range, they use the low poly duplicates for low memory. And that's why you can see so far and think you see so much detail because you can. All the detail you wouldn't be able to see, they don't bother drawing. They just have a duplicate and, and, and re-render. It's, pr it's pretty amazing, actually, yeah. what they did with yeah. that. <laughs> LOD culling is a hell of a thing, especially when you get into... Uh occlusion culling like they did yeah. in horizon zero dawn like yes oh their occlusion culling tech is so good that's why it's so pretty on the ps4 and this is why we're saying if they're doing what they're doing with the ps5 now wait <laughs> um i am very excited for the the storage tech in the ps5 so so nobody's mentioned it but one of the what? all right night night storm mega thanks for joining hope you had fun interesting chat glad to hear it have yourself a wonderful sleep i'll see you soon um one of the most common load screens that you see and nobody's named any of them is the statgasm load screen yeah yeah that's true and i would even include uh Dark Souls, Soulsborne. They love the Statgasm load screen. Yep. Give you a little tidbit of lore, a little information about an item while it loads. Well, their, their lore is hidden on the items, so they were kind of cheeky, and they'll just like, we'll show random items. Give you a little, little tidbit of lore. Yeah, and it's also, hey, by the way, this item exists. Like, there's been a few load screens where I'm like, get that. <laughs> they're simple but they're kind of nice but they're effective um one of the things i'd like to note on statgasm lore seasoning yeah exactly <laughs> their their spice is perfect i love their spice i really loved the level design in um the surge yeah, Surge's level design is well done. I, I wish the combat was too. <laughs> I still think after a break to get the salt out of your system, you should give two a, a try. The yeah, Surge no, that's, two that's totally fixed a lot of problems. That's, that's absolutely my plan is to give two a try. Um, and if it if it solves even a modicum of the problems, I think I'm really gonna like it. Yeah, I got super salty at uh, the Surge in Caria, like. Like swearing and uninstalling the game, salty. <laughs> it had problems. <laughs> it had significant problems. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, the surge it... one. The surge one was. It was a very good first attempt at a Souls-like game. Beautiful. As far level as level design, I love the basic combat. 
as far as like trying to make a game that is like a souls game they actually did a legitimately pretty darn good job yeah but there was just enough rough around the edges that it's not very fun to play a lot of that was solved in uh in the surge 2 and like the dismemberment system is actually super cool I fucking like i love it. that I they love included it. that and, and i love the uh the risk reward benefit of targeting an armored part to ensure you cut it off versus targeting an unarmored part to just kill the enemy quickly it's fucking awesome yeah <laughs> like really really cool design yeah, no, I, I, I did love the game until I got to the first boss, and it wasn't that I was getting my ass kicked. You guys have watched me get my ass kicked many times. <laughs> it was that I saw what they wanted me to do, and once I started actually doing it, the UI wasn't responsive or giving me any information, nothing really... There was no back and forth. I just kind of was doing things until things happened. It's the best way I can explain it. A lot of trial and error. And then once I realized the slow pace that they wanted me to take, I was just like, no, this isn't worth it. Yeah, it stops being fun. Surge 2, though, fixed a lot of those problems real yeah, good. It's already installed. Middle East, uh, Jedi Fallen Order was one that we really liked for obfuscated loading screens. Yeah, they handled <laughs> load screens it. really well. Does anybody remember when we played that? What the load screens were like between planets? As you're wandering, wandering around on your ship, talking to people. As we know, in due time, there are plenty of games, clones and remakes of all genre out there. You know by now if there is a Dark Souls light game that are very watered down in difficulty, almost a fail. A good one to start out with. Dark Souls 1. Yeah. Yeah. Dark Souls 1 is punishing, but not difficult. Yeah, it's not that hard. It, it punishes your mistakes, but it isn't actually difficult to play the video game. You just need to pay attention. And you need to learn when you make a mistake. Yep. It's going to teach you what to pay attention to and how to pay attention to things. <clears throat> that you should treat every enemy with care. And once you've learned those types of things, you'll be able to just go and play them all. You'll, you'll die, but you'll know that the dying is just part of the learning. Yep. There's, there's no real punishment for dying in the Souls games. Well... <laughs> The punishment is in for Dark Souls twice. One. <laughs> the, the punishment is for dying twice. Yeah, if you, if you die to the same thing or die to something that you've already defeated, then you get punished. It's a beautiful design system. So the first death doesn't matter. You just be careful. Get back to where you were. You'll get everything back that you lost. All you've lost is time, but you've learned and you've gotten better. Obfuscated, obfuscated load screens kerbal, kerbal space. space program and astroneer you know i haven't played astroneer kerbal does have load screens but it's all at the beginning when it pre-calculates and pulls in everything i i'm curious to say what you see as an obfuscated load screen in kerbal space program yeah yeah that's actually a good point what what part of the game do you think is the obfuscated load screen get in my face yeah far from a planet to going into atmosphere there is probably some loading that goes on there but i'd imagine it's probably just like chunked in zones it's it's probably closer to lazy loading yeah then Yeah, probably probably more so, like lazy loading than it is um, obfuscated loading. And it's going to be using a lot of the same uh, l LOD culling that we were just talking about with Bloodborne, where it's going to load in low-res members of it 
at a distance and load in higher and higher and higher and higher res as you get closer and closer in. So that's like when go ahead. When we say obfuscated load screen, we're talking specifically about keeping the player in the same sort of thing that they're used to doing, that same context, but say sending them down a long unpopulated hallway because you're not you're not doing anything the player can only move so fast so you know you have the time it takes the player to traverse this hallway in order to load assets in the background that's what we mean by obfuscated load screens uh you see it a lot in re7 the console versions anytime you're like squeezing your way through one of through one of those little narrow passages that's an obfuscated load screen they're loading things in the background. That's why all the things seem so low res as well. Yeah. They're trying to load things quickly and cheaply so that they don't slow down the load of all the high-end assets that they're going to need after you finish crawling through the little space. And there, there are tons of other examples of games doing that. That's just the first one that popped into my head. Yeah, you're, you're, the stuff that you're getting into is yeah, L L efficient LED culling and lazy loading. And we'll get into lazy loading. We'll, we'll get there. We're not done. <laughs> this is, yeah, this we got is another still, 45 minutes. <laughs> this, this is still the beginning of the load screen stuff. I mean, we're talking MGS3, Mass Effect, God of War 3, and Jedi Fallen Order is newer. But they just used the higher end assets to be like well we can just go bigger with our obfuscated loading screen and they would load a ship like the whole ship and you'd be exploring your ship and while you're exploring your ship if you look out the window you'll see all the stars streaking past for the basic exterior that was all they would load for outside and because that's all you can see you're given the feeling of traveling and they're loading the next planet while you're traveling so that it seems like you just took a ship to a new planet and it feels uniform but there's still time taken out of you playing the game where you have to wait for it to load so it's w worse than what Kerbal's doing eh, arguably I would say that if they they tried to do something like Kerbal does it would uh it would end up feeling very strange. Yeah, I don't disagree. But from being Techno far technologically from a worse, to going into atmosphere. Is that old? Techno technologically worse, but like suits the game more. Yeah, yeah. No, I I don't disagree. But uh, still creates more time out of playing in total. I guess th that's an interesting question. Is taking more time out of the player's time to play the game constitutional of a worse loading screen? Well, I think much like the conversation we were just having, it really depends on how you apply the technology. Like if you had some sort of like you have to go into the ship and walk around in the ship in Kerbal when you're like leaving orbit on a planet, That'd be ridiculous. <laughs> but it definitely would not be uh, good. And if you no. didn't do that, then what would happen is you would stop and get a loading screen as you wait for your rocket to take off, and that would be even worse. So yeah. the, the, the lazy loading and, and culling system of it is definitely the way to go. I'm actually pretty amazed that I can just zoom out of one planet and zoom into another planet in real time. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Kerbal does some cool shit. <laughs> Actually, uh, the a lot of the same tech being used a little less elegantly in uh, Subnautica. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which yes. is why you see sometimes you'll you'll enter a new area and then things will pop into existence. Yep. Yep. Um, MMOs were probably the pioneers of that tech. Oh, they, they very much had to be with yeah. the, the network latency involved. 
Yeah, well, network latency and then uh, approaching seamlessness for transitioning between areas and stuff like that. Yeah, thank MMOs for that one. That's, that's where that came from. Now even consoles can do it. Yep. Uh, we've got close-ups. Loading screen of the character. Something to look at. Um, Bethesda. Apparently people actually don't mind those ones. They do something similar to uh, Dark Souls where they just give the player an item. Yeah, the look at. a high-res mesh of the item to look at. Yeah, and then you can move it around and zoom in and stuff like that. It's just you don't get the lore bit with it because they don't have any lore. I would say shots fired, but that's just accurate. <laughs> uh, Thief Thieves is just a wheel that loads in the corner. Does it go to a black screen, Snow? Like it just, or does it? The game just stop, and then there's a little loader going in the corner. Uh yeah. So that's very similar to what Half Life Two did, uh, in that they just basically stop the game from progressing until the actual assets for the next area are done loading and it was always just jarring as hell <laughs> so you're you're sprinting down a hallway you're getting ready to go and then you just stop in those engines okay go in those engines wasn't the collision tied to the asset quite often so like if it didn't load the floor in time you would just fall through the world Uh, you know, I I don't know about the source engine at the time, but that was very common. Yeah, that that would probably be why they would just stop the game, be like, "Whoa, wait here, <laughs> let's make yeah, sure you're not done yet." <laughs> it's like building a bridge, you know. You don't take off the traffic signs until you've finished the arch. <laughs> Uh, Lost Planet 2 lets you shoot a gun and run away as a loading screen. Yeah, so that's uh, another type of that loading was, screen as well. That was Bamco as well, though. That was a, uh, a, a mini game loading screen. Interesting, because there was another type of loading screen that was brought up, and it's a game I think, I'm pretty sure you played, I'm not sure if you liked definitely did it there's other examples bayonetta is one of the examples i think i remember you liking that one yep yep bayonetta is real good so uh, that was something that i was just going to bring up as well <laughs> <laughs> and we talk over each other all the time <laughs> well, it's because we have the same ideas at the same time when you work with somebody that's similar to you for long enough your brains work very similar it happens go yeah. ahead you may speak of Bayonetta. Oh, why, th why thank you. Uh, Bayonetta has, and also other Capcom action games, uh, had combo practice mini games where you just have your character available in the load screen and generally a void of some sort, and you could just practice your combos. You get to, sometimes you'd get an enemy to practice against, sometimes it'd just be you. Uh, and you'd get to just like mash buttons, practice combos, see how things string together, etc. Assassin's Creed, my favorite thing to do was just to run in a straight line. <laughs> see if you can hit the end. That that tells you just how uh, just how engaging I found their combat. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't played an Assassin's Creed game still. Um, I played the first one when it was new, and it it held my attention. I made it yeah. most of the way through the game. Right on. And then they just kept making the same game. <laughs> <laughs> I almost finished that one. I wasn't ready to do it another five times. A lot of people love it. Oh, yeah. That is totally fair. If you're into it, you're into it. But it's, it's not what I wanted out of a game. Yeah, I, uh, I'm not stoked to try one. 
I know a lot of people who got really into it because of like the the historical setting. So you get the this experience of like explore, exploring Constantinople way back in the day or you know visiting the pyramids while they're in construction yeah. stuff like that. That would be cool. Like that's that's really neat. But the the actual game part of the game just couldn't hold my attention. I think I've heard that before. It's almost like you're a game critic or something. What? No. You're banned to play that game. No, you're just banned to buy that game. You you can go ahead and <laughs> play it if you don't have to spend money to get it. But you're not allowed to give Ubisoft money. I won't allow it. Putting my foot down. It's the way it is. Are there any games? Are there the any loading... game <laughs> where the loading screen is go more ahead. fun than the game? Do you like racing games? Are racing games fun to you? Because then you might have more fun in the shmup. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. Because if racing games aren't your thing, then Ridge Racer and Test Drive are probably going to be more fun in the loading screen. I can't remember what the game was, but there was one that I would I would play that was an older Bamco game. I think it was PS2 or PS1 era. Um must have been PS2 era, but there was uh, just the the mini game and the loading screen. I would always try and beat it, and I could never quite finish it before the uh, before the load was done. I always mm -hmm. I was always waiting for the load screens. <laughs> you see, that's that's a great thing. If you're like, yes, a load screen. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's that's engaging. That's that's good gameplay. That's probably why they patented it. Yep. And just just for the record, all the people who are like, man, fuck, ben, fuck Namco for patenting that. It's not their fault that that's how the system works. If they didn't patent it, if they didn't protect it under the law, then anybody could have done anything with it. Or somebody else could have protected it. Yeah. <laughs> and that they'd be hooped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't... Don't blame them on that one. Blame the patent system. And I agree, the patent system is ridiculous. That's a whole other discussion day. Yeah, we, we could easily do two hours on that. So now we've gone obfuscated. And now we're finally starting to get modern. Enjoying the loading screen more than the game may be a comment on the game also. Probably is. It probably is. We now have the lazy loading. And I'm going to call it system because it removes loading screens and it's fucking wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> um, now I'm not... I, I, I know roughly how it works. I've never written a lazy loading system, so I cannot claim to know exactly how it works. And that's just how it is. If you've never written one yourself, you only understand it. <laughs> that's it. You, you at best have an understanding of how it works. But essentially what they're doing is they're breaking up zones into regions. And then these regions are structured on a tree such that it can be traversed so that you know what regions connect to each region. Now you can load the assets for this region and the regions around that region. And when the player transitions from this region to an edge region, so it's now left of the region you've loaded and the cluster around the load, it now culls everything more than one region away. It doesn't need those assets anymore. And it loads everything in the regions up here. Now, there's also a lot of smarts going on, as we were talking from the very, very, very early load screens of, do I still need this asset? And it'll just pop those in. So think of it as a, if you know programming, as a reference to it. Is this still being referenced? Typo? Yeah. Needed the S. Is, is this asset still being referenced 
by one of these other regions that is still holding on to assets? If it is, we don't remove it into memory, we leave it into memory. If it's no longer being referenced by anything up here, we remove it. So you can see it's getting very, very, very complicated very quickly. That is excellent news. Hooray for Hexi. Oh, yeah, it's, it's ad news, right? <laughs> I, I can't even remember my own API on the bot. I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote the thing, and I don't even know how it works. Is So did that make general sense? I'm sure it made sense to you. <laughs> made sense to me, but I'm a bad person to ask. Yeah. Did, does anyone have questions on that? I mean, you don't need to fully understand it, but if you have questions on what I just said, I'm happy to answer them. It's great to have an understanding of what's actually going on. It helps you appreciate these games. Like, in, your in the town, it's got to have all the assets for inside each house. So it's breaking it up into sections and loading the assets for the houses you're closest to. And as you get farther away from them, it doesn't need those assets. It moves over to the houses that you're now approaching. And I bet you it's even taking player vector into account by now. Yep. Uh, Egg and I actually went through the process of wireframing out and designing a uh, grid-based loading system using... Uh, using tiles for like not necessarily a tile based rendering or a, you know you can only move on certain tiles uh but you can you load like things in a graph around you so that you'd like as your player traverses onto a new chunk of the map you load the surrounding area call the old ones you know prep other areas that you can get to etc etc it's uh, it's actually a really fun exercise And yes, assets are any thing, like anything that could be a noun. And uh, as far as multiplayer, it it should just keep the other players loaded because otherwise <laughs> you're worrying about actually loading in the player again when you do come into contact with them. <laughs> yeah, you're, you'd, you'd be trying to then take the multiplayer character asset vectors into account to see if they're going to enter one of the regions surrounding your region to start loading their assets when it's, it, you know, it's multiplayer. It, your your um, side, the word just escaped my mind for some reason, your client, <laughs> only needs to draw your perspective. So it doesn't need to worry about the vectors of the other players to draw where they're going to be heading. It just needs to keep the, the bit of asset to draw their model in memory so that when they pop on screen, it's able to draw them. And then you're only keeping an extra one, two, three, four in memory, unless we start talking stupid multiplayers like you know, 64 player battlefield maps and whatnot. That gets or MMOs. complicated. MMOs. MMOs do a different system we've talked about before where it will load the stats of the character, including its X, Y, but the characters don't have collision for the most part. So it just won't draw the character and your client can go ahead and get around to that character's image when it can. It didn't happen often. When it did happen, it usually wasn't that big a deal because typically massive groups of players were all working together, not in PvP. Every once in a and, while, it would turn into chaos. But... Except for when they were, you know, adding player collision to that when you're trying to do a raid. <laughs> yes. yes. Terra, was, Terra was a mistake. Terra was a mistake all around. Terra's whole design principle was a flawed idea from the get-go. I could have told them as soon as they came up with the idea for the game that that was a bad idea, guys. It's, yeah, no. Shouldn't have done that. No. Nah, not a good one. Turn that one around. The, the, the idea of Terra, if you didn't know, just real quick, was to make an MMO that would appeal to the Korean market and the Western market at the same time. 
so they they just want very different things yeah they they took the really grindy korean mmo and they took half of the grind away to make it more appealing for the western audience and then they shoved a bunch of western ideas of streamlining in and when it was released the western people went this game's really grindy and the korean people went this game's not grindy enough and nobody played it <laughs> totally different uh totally different target markets they just want entirely different things out of their games breaks the world into zones loads player zone plus zone plus adjacent no zones D J A C E N T. there we go yeah because that this gives us the open world game that's how we do it <laughs> yay, yay. <laughs> and then the the problem is that people didn't actually put anything in those games look how big we can make it you can run forever yeah you're gonna make all that content oh that's a lot of content <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's the the map size rush of the uh the early 2010s where everything was just all about, oh, we, we made a bigger map than this. We made a bigger map than that. It didn't need to be noted in there, but the lazy loading did give us that. But it did give us the seamless wandering around into house. Like the, the first time I played a game where I walked up to a house opened the door and the door opened and I walked in and everything was inside the house, my mind exploded. What happened yep. to the load screen? <laughs> yep, it was a big deal. And I was not techie enough to fully get what was happening. I was just like, you're black magic. <laughs> <laughs> black magic had not happened in gaming since the Super Nintendo and the NES. That was the last time they did black magic. Evening, Low. How you doing, buddy? Welcome. We're talking about load screens. We are. Now, with all of this kind of talk talked about, does anybody have any questions about the lazy loading that we were talking about? Anybody want to actually know anything more? I think we covered it fairly well, and I think I put it into English. I think. I'm For usually pretty part. good at making things understandable. That's, that's my strength, my go-to. For the next 15 minutes or so now, before we give away any more games... By the way, there's only one unclaimed game left on the list. Everyone else has claimed them. Oh, nice. Yeah. Everybody else got their video games. Everybody's had their games. So everybody that's been watching all the giveaway stuff that we do... People are getting them. Yeah. Excellent. Where do we think loading goes from here? We get very excited about the PS5 is what we get. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, like the, the, the Xbox Series X is going to be an incredibly powerful little machine and it's going to be very cool. But it's not as cool as what PlayStation is doing with their SSD controller. Uh, so the the long <laughs> predicting back to CDs, yeah, definitely, hundred um, percent. You know what? We, actually, that's we, an interesting note. I want to actually. Yeah, there's go ahead. There's there's something to be said for physical media, much like CDs or Blu-rays or UHD Blu-rays, what have you. And the fact of the matter is that games are growing again. Games are getting enormous to now to the point where if you don't have a, you know, several hundred megabit per second connection, you're going to be downloading that game for a very long time. So having a physical disc, while it may be a costly and inefficient way to ship games to people with good Internet is very important for people who don't have good Internet. Because if you have to load, you know, 120 gigs, cough, cough, Call of Duty, uh, 
onto somebody's system over a five megabit per second connection, which is still the most common connection in the United States, it's going to take a long time. <laughs> Um, we have seen a break in that trend already, though, with the in introduction of the IdTech engine. Yeah, but not everybody's IdTech. Not everybody is, but not everybody needs to be to use it. It, it will become a more yes and no, easily like... accessible thing, I'm sure. Yeah, but at the same time, like the, it, it's much like arguing about Unreal versus Crytex engines. Like Crytex engine was amazing. It looked so good, but it was really hard to use. Like really hard to use. You had That's to fair. really I'm, know what you were doing. <laughs> I'm not saying they necessarily have to use the id tech engine, but that whole paradigm and approach of asset management with singular assets being compressed for loading purposes transfer purposes storage purposes it's not the most complicated thing to implement it just took some big brains to create the paradigm for us to understand it and be like oh that was a good idea yeah yeah for sure so hopefully people will take notes from id because id has done a fantastic job with that do eternal um, is 40 gigabytes on disk 40 smaller than smaller than doom 2016 put that th just wrap ring right around that doom eternal is smaller than doom 2016 let that sink in for a sec think about what that does for load times and transfer times that's very important. So that's that's very exciting. And there will be a reduction in file sizes because of that. Um, that being said, seven really slower right? internet connections are still... Uh, yeah, I think it's seven? Six or seven? One or the other. Um, it's still... The, the truth is still that the internet is not great for that so physical media still definitely have a place and that's why you can see that the ps5 has a, a version with an optical drive on it because not all games are going to be that small but onto the ps5 uh the ps5 has a very very special extremely high performance extremely low uh response time extremely low latency ssd controller in it and what that allows you to do is to skip system memory entirely. So for the programmers in the in in the audience, they probably realize what the fuck? Like that's a big deal. You can go straight from this high performance low latency SSD into VRAM. It doesn't have to go through the processor. <laughs> <laughs> which means that now you've got the ability to just stream assets directly from disk into vram you don't have to load it into system memory you don't have to wait for the processor to process it you don't have to wait for the processor to say oh you know you need this asset you need this asset you don't need this one anymore so let's call that now we need to load this one in it just it streamlines the process it makes it so much faster like a lot of the a lot of the PC elitists these days will go, oh, well, I've got an eight gigabit per second, uh, eight gigabit per second PCIe four SSD. That's that's way faster than the the PS 5s SSD. Yeah, it is, but its controller holds it back, and the fact that it has to go through system memory holds it back. It's got extra links in the chain that the PS five doesn't have. It's a short circuit controller, basically. Oh, we don't need to it's do all that. Cool. We can just send it straight there. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, no, this this might be the first time since cartridge, as Glencon's saying, where console gaming might surpass PC gaming in performance. And yeah, there's and there's a good chance that it will for a while. And and, a, and the Series X will not surpass the PC in performance. 
it won't it can't nope. can't the pc has bigger numbers it may have bigger raw numbers than the ps5 and the pc has bigger raw numbers than it and the ps5 went the clever route yeah so the P- the ps5 doesn't need big numbers because they just went wait a minute we don't need like two-thirds of this garbage we, we we just don't need it so let's just not do it uh, i'm pretty sure the ps4 supports keyboard and mouse uh it's down to games if the game supports the input type then you can use keyboard and mouse on a playstation and I'm sure you'll start seeing more KB, KB and M support games as time continues. Especially if they want to compete on a, in a realistic way with the PC market, that, that would be the way to do it. Yeah. Um, I did notice that we glossed over one little step in the evolution of loading screens. As we were talking about the types of loading screen, after the disc medium... There was an era where the game install happened. And there was a bunch of weird shit that happened in that era. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the main idea behind it is the hard drive that we're storing is still faster than the CD-ROM. It's not fast, but it's faster than the, the disk drive, the optical drive that we have. So let's put everything from the optical drive onto the hard drive so that when we load it, we can get it faster, shorten the load times. But then they started getting worried about game sharing, multiple people installing it, stuff like this. So they decided, well, you know what? Let's just put the security on the disk and not install the security. Yeah, so it has to go back to disk anytime it wants to load anything to check whether or not you've got a legitimate copy of the game, which is annoying. The alternative was to do a game key system where it would only be able to be installed on one system. A la PC. <laughs> that was a bad idea, though, too, because it removes the retail value and the secondary market. And that secondary market on console is huge. It's, it's secondary market isn't a thing really with PC. It never has been, but it's so huge in the console world that if you start to trounce on it, you lose customers instantly. So it's not something you can just do. Although now we're starting to see systems that are just doing that. Like the, uh, I think both the Xbox series series X and the PS five associate the game with your account for digital rights management rather than associating it with hardware or you know some sort of registry so you you then have the game associated to your account anywhere you can log in you can play your game but it does require an internet connection that's how steam works by the way (laughs) steam's kind of great people like to complain about it but it's kind of great. It it does a solid enough job. The, uh, the whole DRM part of it being always online or at least needing to check in, uh, online and fairly regular intervals. It did have some pushback initially, and it is something that is not the greatest in the world, but it's better than the old ways of doing things. Locking games to one console is awful because if your console breaks beyond fixing, you have to buy all those games again. That's a good point. That is a good yep. point. So I dropped a guitar pick. Getting back, <laughs> <laughs> uh, now that I've been able to just go back and cover that, because that was an important note to have in there. It was a, an era and a thing that happened. It wasn't super important. It didn't change a lot, but it happened. Um, Getting back to this whole PS5 SSD controller thing, do you remember the PS5 tech demo of the UE5 engine with all those ultra, ultra, ultra high-res assets and stuff like that and the character moving around in the cavern at high speed and swinging through things and actually being controlled through all of that high-res environment? 
in real time. Do you remember it slowing down in frames or having any load screens that whole time? I don't. People, I've, I've seen people see and like, oh yeah, it looked like a little bit nicer than the PS4. I'm like, there was no load screens. And that's not just a little bit nicer. That's that's loading assets with more polygons than PS3 games. <laughs> yeah, single assets. <laughs> single assets. Like a statue. I, th I think the actual uh, example that they used was one of those statues in... Uh, in the initial cavern in the dark had more polygons in it than an entire ps3 game we're talking trillions of polygons in a single statue asset because they've essentially made their ssd system ram well that's not the only reason <laughs> <laughs> that's not the only reason but the ue5 engine is definitely taking advantage of that on the PS5. One statue, one versus, statue one versus one console. The one statue wins. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> there, there was another 50 statues around it. <laughs> if, if you didn't... Statue falls on console, GG. <laughs> yep, Unless it's right. an N64, then it's fine. <laughs> yeah, then the statue just breaks in half. <laughs> it had GoldenEye in it, and GoldenEye just wedged right through it. Yep. Yeah. I've seen it many times, yeah. There was so many statues there. And a part of it is what they're doing on the engine side as well. So UE5 engine, in order to pull that off, is basically breaking the polygons down to the point where the polygons are smaller than the pixel. So instead of trying to calculate every polygon, it calculates the pixel's color based on the polygons within it so it just needs to generate an average of those polygons to figure out what color that pixel should be dumbed Which down is super freaking cool yeah yeah it's a totally <laughs> different way of approaching it i saw that I was just like whoa nobody's gonna appreciate this but the few people that i know this ah uh. <laughs> And then I, I, to, I need to go tell my nerd friends about this yep, and, and then every <laughs> all the uh all the pseudo nerd people that just love their retro stuff was like, yeah, it looked a little nicer, but they didn't get it. And I can't explain it all to you. I'm sorry. It's too much. I don't have an hour to explain this. Two hours actually is, is really what it took. <laughs> but it's always like this. You showcase epic stuff, but then we need to wait until almost consoles end of time to actually achieve that level of detail, tech, etc. At least that's how I felt up until PS2 which is the last super next-gen console I had. I um, would agree with you for the most part. The impressive thing is that this was running on a PS5 dev kit. Yeah. This is a playable right now on the PS5 done on the dev hardware. It's actually running on the PS5 right now. It's not an example. This is, this is the first-gen stuff. When we're, when we're always talking about this is the first-gen, imagine what the last gen will be like yeah this is well look at the launch titles look at look at how good they looked in the actual gameplay look at how smooth and fluid they were there was no load time there was bouncing between areas instantly teleportation wow wow it's gonna be amazing yeah the and the eventual trickle of that tech over to pc it's going to necessitate a lot of people buying new SSDs straight up. Like none of the SSDs that we have right now, the controllers are not fast enough to do that. They are not low latency enough to do that. You're going to need to buy new SSDs. I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this. Oh yeah, me too. I'll buy a new SSD for that. You know what that means? That means I have two terabytes of SSD to store movies on. I don't have to wait for my media to load. <laughs> <laughs> no RTX. Wait for the new AMs. Yeah, I, I would wait. And it, and it could very well be that the new uh, NVIDIA 3000 series are more powerful than the new AMD chips. That is entirely possible. I would say even likely. But 
this is now moving into the second generation of ray tracing tech rather than the first generation of ray tracing tech when it start it might start actually being widely used and good yeah. once we start seeing more people with pcs that have ray tracing enabled gpus in them that's when you'll start seeing games actually using them because the rtx series was a so expensive b so exclusive and c only on one side of the fence you couldn't actually you couldn't actually implement it you couldn't do it uh, ray tracing is on the gpu more because it's pretty bottlenecked in the calculation uh more or less yes uh as i'm sure you know glencon uh it's all floating point calculations it's all fp16 uh, so you want to do that in as many small, specialized ASICs as possible, which is exactly what a GPU is. It's all floating point calculations. So there you go. X86 is a weird thing. It is. Did, 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 just to completely tangent off into a uh, processor instruction sets, uh, the fact that x86 is so capable of doing so many things, but so fucking inefficient, like so inefficient, and it has so much legacy instruction well, just available on chip at all times because it's a complex instruction set, means that now, like, Apple's switching to ARM, which is a risk uh, architecture. And you're starting to see more people like thinking about ARM chips using risk chips rather than CISC chips. Also the own chips again, interestingly. Yeah. Yeah. Which is and, and that's really cool. Like the the fact that you can build specialized processors that are more efficient, faster than uh x86 chips at doing certain things is very very useful that's sort of why it's so like diversity and inefficiency kind of go hand in hand usually in order yep. to be able to do so many things you can't be specialized on any one thing you're not going to be great at any of them it's just which really makes me wonder, like, life. oh, straight up. But it, it makes me wonder, like, architecture-wise, what's going to happen with processor design if ARM does take off, if Apple makes it, you know, widely accepted that a RISC instruction set is going to be something that's useful in a desktop, well, not necessarily a desktop, but a, a, a regular computer, not just a mobile device. Because most people don't do super complicated things. Most people don't need all of x86. This is very true. So, uh, could be really cool. <laughs> Two arms and a leg. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> But yeah, now that I've I've done that tangent on processor instruction sets, we should probably give away some video games. Good, because I just finished preparing to give away some video games. <sighs> Thank you for keeping people entertained while I typered. Entertained is a strong word. And Glencon, thank you for keeping Rage entertained while I typered. Yeah, there you go. There's some entertainment. All right, who's first no no nobody's first yeah. they've decided that they no longer want to let me use it if i'm running ad blocker eh. i mean we'll keep using it for this one and then find a different thing <laughs> i'll just write my own then yup i can write a random picker it ain't that hard. Hey! To rage bot. I think she's he or he. he she's, sorry. He, they. He, they are here. He. I know they're here. Because they just told everybody to have good luck. 
That's what hey. you get. You hope in other people win, you end up winning yourself. How do you like that, Incaria? How do you so like that? So you get that? yourself a Vig game. That might be a little big. Let's do like five or six. We have so many games to give away. You did. You did win. No, apparently you resubbed. You've got a little uh, little stool next to your name. Yep. I think he was gifted that sub even. Well, there you go. You got an entry on somebody else's dollar. Even better. It is the freest of free video games. Forgot to take a couple out. Hey! I have the itchiest nose in the world. That happens to me all the time. It's past midnight, so I like how this day started. A day of fortune. And it's a good game, too. Lego Batman 3. Oh, I don't know if it's a good game. But I know the Lego games are usually good games. Yeah, the, the Lego games are generally pretty solid. I, I don't think I've seen one that was reviewed poorly. I will absolutely check Discord as soon as I'm done here and respond with your game. Hey, it's somebody else I know how to track down. Frenum as well has won in Caria. Hey, so when Frenum. you see Frenum, you make sure you let him know that he's got to get a hold of me. To pick up. <gasps> Tabs! Awesome. I'm sure he can have fun with tabs. You will let him know right now. Awesome. Do you, have you ever heard of tabs in Caria? Do you know tabs? Totally accurate battle simulator. Tabs is silly as all hell. You know about it. It's it's hilarious, and he should absolutely do some of it on stream. Just just dick around with it for a little bit. It's it's ridiculous, silly fun, and it sounds like. Something that Frenum will love. And Deninja. I think I saw Deninja popping in earlier. Might still be lurking around. Definitely can find Deninja. And Deninja will be around. We'll get him his game. Yep. And it is a company of destiny or fate i don't know what that is i know nothing about that game time to google it referred to as fate from latin is it okay no deck building roguelite interesting that sounds fun i like deck building roguelites. is it is it like slay the spire kind of it's got a six out of ten on steam though it is kind of like slay the spire interesting yeah. Oh my. She is wearing only leaves. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see you're looking at the screenshots as well. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So enjoy that one, Deninja. <laughs> Hey! Tet de oof. Destiny or fate? And what did the X Raven win? X Raven! Stealth 2, a game of clones. You're very welcome, Incaria. Sleep that well. That rings some bells. Still call you Raven. Okay. Yeah, it sounds familiar oh, to me. Oh, yeah, I watched, uh, I watched uh, WTF Is on this game. It's pretty neat. This is a neat little game. And Christo is not here, but Christo got one. One, two, three, four. This is number five. Uh, 
I know it is. So is this one. Shooting stars. Make sure to include game when you Google it. Otherwise, you won't get it. I just put it on Steam. <laughs> oh, it's a shmup. Oh, it's a very colorful shmup. It is. Very colorful and very pixel shmup. I like it. It looks pretty cool. It's got very positive reviews, too. And cool. it's on super, super, super sale. If anybody's looking for a very pretty <laughs> little shmup, it's available wow. for 70 cents Canadian. <laughs> yeah, 90% off for 69 cents Canadian. If you like shmups, go pick it up and check it out. It's getting very positive reviews and it looks awesome. Yeah. Check it out. Looks good. Published by Daedalic. They do some good shit. Oh yeah, Daedalic is, is solid. That's probably how Bored ended up with He's a big fan of their games. Probably bought a, a pack of Daedalic and didn't pick this one up out of it. Yeah, screwed up, Bored. Take a laser cat, what else, and shoot your way through different most popular characters, more or less well-known, a retro shoot 'em up indie gem, and it's best made in Austria. Interesting. Let's do one more. That game was too cool. You did donate a bunch of indie games that no one has heard of. So did we. <laughs> Yay! All of these games were donated by mostly by the panel and a few by board. Hey, so thank you very Snow! Much. Snow, are you still here? You want a free video game? Oh, it's a good game. From the Capcom bundle. Ooh, that is a good game. It's a very good game. You won spoopy zombies, Snow. Zombie. Zombie. Which was the Daedalic game? Uh, shooting shooting stars. stars. <laughs> you won uh, the Resident Evil Zero HD remaster. I love Resident Evil. We talked about them in the load screens. They pioneered the transitional load screens. Not necessarily Mind the first, at the time. but definitely a pioneer. Yeah, Why I hate it. Is so itchy. I don't know. It happens so sometimes. So itchy. <laughs> it happens. You know, it's only when the camera's on too. You're like, "Why is my nose suddenly so goddamn itchy?" <sighs> yeah, no, all the time. Um, yeah. So I will be tracking down those people to give away some seemingly fantastic games. I know for a fact Resident Evil Zero is great. I know for a fact Tabs is fantastic. Shooting Stars looks to be awesome, and I've heard great things about Stealth too. Sorry, Denise. Yeah. <laughs> Something to it, do with uh, the spotlight. Maybe? Uh, you know, it's possible? Maybe. Except that I don't have any of my lighting set up. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think he means like. Knowing people are watching you. Uh, maybe. Too busy trying to assassinate someone. Oh, Deninja, I get it. <laughs> uh... Anyway, I think I need to eat some food because I haven't really had much other than a bowl of oatmeal yet today. Not dry enough because there's no heat from the lights. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I will be back a little later I've got a racing wheel I've got a shifter I've got some pedals I'm going to plug all that in and set all that up and then I'm going to crash in some grid and maybe we'll even try to do some uh, dirt rally with the wheel <laughs> ooh that'd be fun I've heard that dirt's uh, wheel support is actually like super good yeah right on 
I, I look forward to dirt's like a ton of fun. I mean, it's it's hard as shit, but it's a ton of fun. Uh, dirt rally and grid. I love grid. Yeah, the original grid. Yeah, so I'll I'll be back a little bit later with the wheel and pedals and everything, and we get, it's the first time I've ever used the actual wheel, so there will be some ridiculous crashes. It'll be great. Sounds like a good time. And and it's pretty sim. <laughs> it's pretty sim. So like the cars get actually banged up, and like in dirt rally, you can lose a wheel and it affects your handling. And yeah. It, once you start crashing a little bit, it just goes so downhill so fast. You just start crashing over and over and over again because you can't control your damn car anymore. And there's no resetting. I go until the car breaks. So that should be fun. So yeah, make sure you don't I, I miss played that. played all of like two or three races in dirt, and uh, they just uh, the cars got broken a lot. <laughs> And then I went, you know what? I'm going to go back to playing grid. <laughs> I, I I finished my first race that I ever did in Dirt Rally. Uh, I can't remember which version it was, but it was, an old, it was an older version. But I finished the first race I ever did, but I was like seven minutes behind first place. And I did another like three races, four races after that, and I got down to two minutes behind. And then I did a race where all three of my first sections were green. Ooh. which meant I actually had the top time through the first three sections. And then I found out that if you go off the road hard enough, you can just total your vehicle and lose right there. That was the last time. You I sure can. <laughs> 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 so definitely don't miss that. The crashes will be a good time. I'm sure. Until that time, have yourselves a fantastic Saturday evening afternoon wherever i guess it's all evening now i'm deus and i'm rage and may all your shots be headshots <laughs>